Uh, SMEs really at the moment just want to know what, what is blockchain, what's it going to do to our sector, and then often the step comes, you know, what's it going to do to my specific business model. Hi guys, welcome to the new episode of Blockchain Beyond Hype. Today we're talking with Francis Hutley from BlockSmart about small and medium enterprises and how they approach the blockchain adoption. So we're here today with Francis. Welcome to Blockchain Zoo. Uh, we're excited to have you here to discuss your thoughts on how usage of the blockchain technology is spreading among small and medium enterprises. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. So um, with your business partner in Europe, you help small companies bridge the gap between uh, the blockchain technology and their business activities. What are the crucial steps of this process? Uh, yeah, so um, at the moment we're very much in the educational phase. Um, uh, SMEs really at the moment just want to know what, what is blockchain, what's it going to do to our sector, and then often the step comes, you know, what's it going to do to my specific business model. Um, in terms of rolling out strategies and things like that, there's some forward-thinking SMEs who want to start innovating now with blockchain. But at the moment, the steps we take are kind of um, introductory workshop, um, SME subject matter expert training, um, and and then move to more kind of specific actionable meetings about you know what are your objectives and how can blockchain match up with those. Um, but yeah, it's it's educational primarily at the moment. Okay. So what is the primary daily activity of managing your business? Visiting clients in their locations in APAC, uh, educating their teams, acquiring new leads. Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we've kind of got two tracks running at the same time. We have. A couple of existing clients um, where we've, we're sort of educating them in, on a fairly informal basis. They're not looking to roll anything out at the moment, okay. um, but they're in industries, for example, ticketing, where they know, you know, blockchain is inevitability. We're a big ticketing company. We need to know exactly how it's going to disrupt or augment our business or whatever. Please tell us how. Um, not with a view to rolling out yet. Um, so we've got a few clients like that who are just kind of informating, information gathering. Uh, and then the second track is kind of trying to build out an educational facility. Um, so uh, we're setting up workshops in Singapore um, for SME specifically um, and looking to launch an ebook as well. Um, so, yeah, trying to kind of build our network um, um, for the time when the blockchain tipping point comes and then uh, they know who to come to. Okay. Uh, with how many companies do you work at a time? Uh, so at the moment it's been one to two at a time. Um, Again, we're, we're learning our processes just as much as um, the SMEs themselves are kind of learning about blockchain. Uh, once we get more efficient at that, we can definitely take on more clients at a given time. Yeah. So um, adoption of blockchain technology in P2P has shown its power with the rise of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Who do you see as the next group of mass adopters? Um, so again, it, it feels like kind of two parallel streams. You have the private blockchain consortiums where there's a lot of research and development coming from corporates. Uh, and you know there's, there's 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 tension in a sense between the public blockchains and and private blockchains, but we, we see those as being definitely like a very useful first step, um, and they're providing kind of real time visibility for transactions happening within the network. Um, but then alongside that, and so yeah, you you can probably see that playing out, and then public blockchains in their kind of big you know ambitious states will will kind of come later. Um, but then al alongside that, there's definitely isolated use cases which are working out, you know, the, uh, which are specifically targeted to SMEs as well. Mm -hmm. So the ICO was very much a small business use case. Um, and then we're seeing quite a lot in peer-to-peer -peer lending as well. Um, so we think, yeah, isolated use cases will crop up, which are targeted specifically at consumers and SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the broader kind of big blockchain network piece will happen consortiums first and then public blockchains. So um, there are many spheres of uh, adopting blockchain, such as decentralized applications, cryptocurrency payments, protocol as it is. From your perspective and experience, which path are SMEs taking? Um, so again, it's, it's kind of a combination. Um, you have sort of savvy, opportunistic e-commerce sellers, for example, who are making a million in revenue per month. 7% of that is taken from using all the different banking transfer fees and to get it back if they're trading in the US, for example, to get it all the way back to Australia and then cash out, it comes to about 7%. So savvy ones have thought, okay, well, let's use crypto and solve that problem, save 7%. Uh, very much an isolated use case at the moment. And then there's, again, more isolated use cases and things like supply chain provenance, um, uh, you know, small diamond companies and all their different stakeholders starting to use provenance. Um, so these things will, will kind of crop up um, 
Um, but in terms of big on-ramp of, of SMEs, we're really waiting for blockchains to become properly scalable. Okay. So how is the European Union different from the Asia-Pacific? Uh, so most of our operations actually in Asia-Pacific. I'm, I'm from the UK, but um, I think I prefer to be in Asia. I think they're slightly more forward thinking about these types of things. And Europe is, is definitely more risk averse and quite um, strict when it comes to regulations. Um, so I, I don't know the European market as well, but preferring to operate in Asia for the moment. Okay. So um, is the blockchain technology actually ready for mass adoption? Scalability limitations were evident with uh, Bitcoin payments becoming slower and more expensive. It looks like if um, mass usage occurred soon, the technology would crumble upon itself. How is this aspect handled in a strategic advisory? Yeah, so for some use cases where there's not a lot of transacting happening, it works quite well. So peer-to-peer -peer loans, for example, there aren't too many steps and not there's not daily or ra rapid, you don't need rapid transactions. So that kind of works. Uh, and then for something like provenance, where you're just logging events to a blockchain, they also work, as, assuming you don't have to log too many. Um, but no, in, if you want, you know, you know, rapid value exchange and the rapid access and liquidity and stuff that everyone's expecting, then the blockchains have to become more scalable. Okay. So the chain of um, hyper successful ICOs, which did not go further than collecting funds, has damaged the trust over the last two years. Are you dealing with ICOs at all? So we, we don't have a legal counsel at the moment, so we do not take on any ICOs. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you filter out SMEs that are keen on uh, blockchain adoption despite the lack of use cases? Uh, yeah, we definitely encourage them to become kind of network leaders within their you know sphere of operation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's the, the best use cases are very much going to be within these networks, and it's a big case of kind of stakeholder management, building a community of people and building rules within that community. Um, and so we very much encourage them to try and be the leaders um, in that. And uh, you know, we see that as inevitability. Therefore, you know, start that now. Start doing pilots. Start um, bringing stakeholders together. Um, and and then yeah, and become a leader basically. Okay. So um, large institutions can invite large consultancy companies to build a map of their digital transformation, including the usage of certain technologies like blockchain. Maybe I am wrong, but SMEs treat consulting services as a luxury product. Is it what you have experienced with your clients? Uh, so there's, there's definitely a range um, of products. The, the full-scale digital transformation and things like that would definitely be a luxury product, um, product for, for an SME. Um, but you've got everything down from uh, you know, 999 handbooks um, all the way to digital transformation to kind of to our strategy sessions. So there, there's a big range. Um, and when it comes to something as complex as blockchain, um, it's normally something that they seek outside help for. Yeah. Um, what does it take to provide a small company with customized blockchain strategies? Um, so it really d depends specifically on what they're looking for. Um, for some people, it's uh, we want to try a specific use case. Uh, we, we have in mind the idea of saving money in this specific area, and we want to use blockchain for that. Um, and then for others, it's they're slightly more ambitious. That you know, we, we want a token, we, we want to build a network, and things like that. Um, so it really, really completely depends on the client. Yeah. Okay. What should SMEs think through before rushing into the adoption of this technology, or even before reaching out to, uh, for help to a company like yours? Yeah, I think um, you, you've definitely got to spend a good period of time on, on the education side. Um, and there's a lot of, you can kind of understand it at a very basic level in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there are a lot of concepts which need to sink in, um, and a lot of moving parts which, which work together, which uh, over time, uh, yeah, it, it takes a period of time for that type of thing to sink in. Uh, so definitely spend some time on the educational front uh, and give yourself a, a period of time to work work over that. Okay. Um, innovation will break or make many businesses. It looks like you're giving this uh, unique opportunity of agile, smart, and strategic development to SMEs, which is absolutely great. What is the biggest mistake that owners of uh, small businesses keep on making? Well, the ones that don't survive just leave it too late. Um, okay. So we very much encourage them to keep abreast with tech trends and, uh, and just keep up to speed uh, and think really very critically about uh, the different technologies that are emerging. Okay. 
uh, what kind of opportunities are unlocked after a closer look at what blockchain can do for specific businesses? Mm -hmm. So the type of kind of 100x strategies that eventually we want to roll out are hard to come by now. Um, you really need a network of stakeholders who are um, kind of operating together in order to get the real benefits of blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely cost saving attributes and things like that. Um, in terms of in terms of hidden value, we're still trying to tease out where we can find that. But until there's a network of stakeholders who are um, you know working together, it's a little bit harder, especially when it comes to blockchain specific solutions. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you for telling us about BlockSmart and how consulting can help small and medium enterprises with adopting the blockchain technology. We do like to ask all our guests, how do you envision blockchain changing the world? Uh, so in a kind of immediate, I mean, I think the, the big amazing innovations that will come from blockchain, very much like the internet, are impossible to predict now. We didn't know social networking was going to be um, the big use case from the internet. Um, in the immediate term, I see the developing world um, as just a major kind of untapped pool of human capital um, and bring them into the system. That is somewhere where um, crypto does do it better than the traditional world. As in, is it easier to build banking infrastructure for three billion people or just giving everyone a private key? Um, and when there's no um, immediate sort of valuable financial services, there's nothing to replace, so you, there's no switching costs, therefore provide a little bit of value with a good crypto product um, and you have a good chance of you know, on-ramping a lot of people rapidly. Uh, so yeah, I think in, in the kind of near to medium term, uh, that's going to be a really cool thing to play out. Okay. And um, how do you think the market for blockchain-based solutions will evolve? Um, in terms of blockchain specific solutions and kind of you know these blockchain as a service things i think that that's potentially like a, a relatively slow moving business um, again there's going to be isolated use cases which crop up everywhere whether it's peer-to-peer -peer lending or icos things like that which are going to provide a lot of value um, so that's the kind of thing we very much keep our eye on um, this year has been the year of kind of uh, stable coins and decentralized finance decentralized finance is providing real value at the moment and you know stable coins mean that anyone from around the world can access the US dollar and things. There's going to be some cool use cases with that. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but that's what we're keeping our eye on. Yeah. OK. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you again for coming to speak with us at Blockchain Zoo about BlockSmart and the blockchain adoption by small and medium enterprises. Sure. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Um, thank you for watching, guys. We at Blockchain Zoo are excited to bring you our new guest on our next episode.